Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, surprise. <laughs> um, so, when I was asked to, to do this, I said, no. You know, why are you asking me, in my mind? Um, you know, this, I've got so much issues, I've got so much problems, and um, I'm not qualified. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not the one. I thought that's the thoughts that came to me, you know. Um, so, automatically, it's, it's like the enemy starts to disqualify you, okay? But the, the issue, you know, the understanding is that we, anybody can, can, can stand up here and speak his word, yeah? Those who know him, they could speak his word, and God is no respecter of persons. He's just looking for somebody to, to be obedient to him and to just speak his word. And so, um, <laughs> to be standing up here is like, wow, you know, thank you, Lord. So what the assignment I was given today was about, um, it was really, we believe God equips us, which is set in the, um, Ephesians 6, uh, 10 to 20. So I am um, really, I'm just going to be your, your pilot today in this plane, in this flight, and um, buckle up, okay? But the issue is that I'm not the only one flying, or I'm not the chief pilot. Jesus is flying, so there's not going to be no crashes today, all right? Amen? There won't be any crashes. So first of all, we believe. What, what is it that we believe? We do. That's right, we believe in him. We believe in him because he's our savior. He's our Lord and King. And we believe in Him because He has saved us. Those that have given, that have given a life to God, He has saved us. He has drawn us from that empty place, from that place of emptiness. And He's drawn us to Himself. So believe is really it's not passive, you know. Um, as you read, when you read like, like Hebrews, all the heroes of faith, every time, you know, you read, you recognize that there was an action, there was something which they actually done. So, belief is, is being confident, or faith is having confidence in God, regardless of how we feel or what we're going through. Faith is action, as we know. Um, and faith is really is the key. Um, faith comes by what? It comes by hearing, by the word of God. That's in Romans 10, 17. Hebrews eleven six tells that without faith, it's impossible to please God. But the issue here is that faith is also a fight. Who likes fighting here? Who's a fighter? Anybody? <laughs> yeah. See, the issue is that we all need to be fighters. We need to be fighters not in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense. Okay? We all need to be fighters because... In 1 Timothy 6.12, it says, um, tells of the fight, to fight what? To fight a good fight of faith. Yeah? 1 Timothy 6.12. Fight a good fight of faith. But the issue is that how is it that we fight? How do we fight? How do we fight? Um, 
in the physical, we fight with weapons, right? We fight maybe with our fists. We fight in different things. But in the spiritual, you know, we're all spiritual beings. There's a different sort of fight here. There's a the different sort of fight. But so the enemy knows that we need to fight. And so what God in his wisdom have given us is certain weapons that we can use to actually fight in the spiritual. These weapons he has actually formed himself. And these weapons are not our weapons. It's his weapons that he has fashioned, that he has kind of, he has taken it within himself and said, this is what we're going to actually need in that spiritual place to do the fighting. So I'd like to ask to do something here. I'd like, I like for you to help me a little, okay? I'd like to, for us to be out, outstanding for those that can stand, okay? And go to Ephesians 6, those are Bibles. Go to Ephesians 6, 10. And what we're going to do now is declare God's word. Word that he has actually given to us to do the fighting. And as we go through it, you recognize certain things. Okay? Are we all there? Yes. Those who have Bibles? You ready? So let's start from 10. So this is Ephesians 6, 10. Okay? Let's start. Finally, NIV, sorry. NIV. <laughs> NIV. <laughs> so that. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness placed, and with the feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and be always keeping praying glory. Amen. <laughs> Sorry. 18. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for your... Yeah, it's meant to be 20. So, um, we've, we've just gone through it. And this, the thing is, there's so much in that. There's so much to unpack in that. Um, when I was going through this, I thought to myself, there's no way I can, I can you know, unpack all of this in a, a lot of time given. But I'm going to try and, and do that. Um, so... The issue is, why, why did I ask us to, to, to declare his word? Why I asked us to declare his word is that when you speak the word of God, and you've got to understand that the word is, is not our word, it's his word that he's given to us. And his word is awesome, it's powerful, it's what? Active. It's, it creates... It says that it does not return onto us void. It means that when you send it, it actually achieves what it's meant to do. 
It's not empty. It's not like man's word. Man's words are empty. They're hollow. They're untruths. They're lies. You know, even the one that, that means well for you, when you look into it deeply, there is a problem there. That's man's word. But, but God's word, there is no fallacy. It's, it's just clear. It's clarity. It's, it says what? It's a path onto us. It, it shows us the way. It's a light. That's his word. So when we declare his word, we embody it. Okay? And his word is what? We, I mean, when there was a prayer today, somebody did say that the word is, is God. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. His word is, is like the spoken word. Really, it defines us. It's really us. It's for us in terms of it identifies us, you know. So you must declare the word often, you know. You must declare the word because it is, it is, it is an awesome word. And before we get into what we just read, I'd just like to touch on um, in the Old Testament, Isaiah 15, verse, sorry, Isaiah 59, verse 15, okay? I'm just going to read, read that for you. Um, starting from, uh, let's look. Yeah, so, yeah, Isaiah 15, five, um, 59, 15. And it says, truth is nowhere. <laughs> Okay, truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shows evil becomes a prayer. The Lord looked and was displeased. Oh, yeah, somewhere. <laughs> it's reading back. <laughs> okay, the Lord looked and, there was, and, and was displeased. There was no justice. And he saw that there was no one, he was so poor that there was no one in, to intervene. So his own arm achieved salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on, he put on righteousness as his breastplate, and, hel and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on a garment of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak according to what they have done so will he repay wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes who repay the islands their due so in that scripture God was redeeming us because no man could do the job. So God's arms himself, he arms himself. His own righteousness. And God acts for him, by himself. He uses his own armor. And so the armor that we spoke about actually belongs to him. He fashioned it. And he fashioned it for us, recognizing what we're going to face, recognizing that we need to fight, and there's a battle for us to fight, you know? And so this armor that he fashioned for us, he requires us to put that, put that on daily. And I looked briefly what, what this meant in terms of armor. Have we got any Greek scholars in the house? No? Greek? No? Okay, so the word armor, does anybody know what it means? It means, in Greek, that is, it's pano, panopolia, P A N O. Breastplate. Sorry? Breastplate. Breastplate. <laughs> Thank you. The armor is. P-A-N-O-P-I-P-L-I-A, -I 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 panopolia, 
Pelia. That's what that means in Greek. And that, what that means is it's a combination of two words. It means pan, which is all, and hopolia, which means arms. Okay? So panopolia refers to a complete suit of armor worn by heavily armed infantry soldiers in ancient Greece. So what that meant was that they just didn't wear a part of it. They wore every part, okay? So there's a requirement to put this armor on because there's something going on. There's a warfare that's going on. So every piece is required to be put on. And every piece does something. Every, there's, it's, it's split into two parts. It's split into one that is defensive and the other which is offensive. Most of it is defensive, actually, when you go through it. <coughs> so we first spoke about the belt of truth, which we put on. And the belt of truth is all about God's truth. And it tells us what we're capable of. It tells us what the truth that God has done for us. It tells us the truth that tells us what Christ is doing for us. It gives us clarity on what God has done and what he's already done for us. So, when you look at, um, I think, Hebrews 4.12, it says, the word of God is living and active. So, the truth, the belt of truth is normally backward around your waist, and it's about the truth of God. This is why the scripture is so important. Because it, it kind of gives us a clarity in identifying what we need to do. Next one, quickly, is the breastplate of righteousness. And again, this is defensive. This is God's righteousness for us to put on. So it's not about our righteousness. I mean, we don't do anything per se to, to get that righteousness. You know, it's something that he puts on us. He gives this to us. Okay? Um, we don't earn it. There's nothing that we can do to, to gain his righteousness. We just need to accept his, his righteousness. God's righteousness is God's justice. He's right. He's right. He's a righteous judge. Not like a, a human judge, um, but God is he's a righteous judge, and he's the one that, that really that we go to when we, we need, you know, we, we need support. Going through it quickly, the next one is the sandals. Now, who noticed that he spoke about the sandals? Was, it, was sandals mentioned in there? No? What did it say? It said, it actually doesn't say sandals. It says, um, and with, the, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. But we recognize it's something that you have to wear on your feet. Okay? So this is, is quite important because it actually helps us to stand. And what the enemy often does is that he attacks us with thoughts. He attacks us with, and it, it doesn't stop. It, it continues to come. So if you, those that have watched different films, Roman films like, um, what films are there um, that are popular with Romans? Um, 
Gladiator. Thank you. And they actually made part two now, haven't they? So with Gladiator, you notice that they wear the full armor. They go as an army. So it's not an individual thing. It's, it's, a, it's an army. So they go together as an army, suited, in shoes, wearing sandals, what the enemy does with warfare, that he sends his arrows, and his arrows that are sharpened with things like, you're not good enough. You haven't earned your place. You're too short. You're too wide. You're too old. You're not qualified. These are the type of arrows that the enemy sends to us. He tells us that you're the wrong race. You're a failure. You're not capable. So you've got to imagine that when these arrows begin to fly, right, you need shoes that can hold you, that you can kind of hook onto, that can help you stand the onslaught of the enemy that continues to come. And this doesn't stop. It continues daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. It continues on and on and on. But you know what? God has given us all the armor we need. And the sandals helps us to stand. Stand on your feet, which is critical. So what it does, it covers our feet, it protects, it surrounds us with the preparation of gospel of peace. The, help, the, the sandals will help us to stand on God's word and to stand on good news that he has overcome. The next weapon or next armor is the shield of faith it says above all taking the shield of faith which will be you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one so with the shield what god gave me is that it's like again looking at that the roman army the way that they used the shield was that they came together as one and they held the shield some in front, some over the top, some at the back. So when the enemy fired those, those darts, those thoughts that tells you you're not good enough, you're not capable, that you can't do it, that your failure that keeps on flying, you're protected, not just by your own shield, but all the other shields that surround you. It's imperative that we recognize that we're an army. And the army, you're shielded by each other. That each other's shield is there to protect not just you, but other people as well. Amen? So, the shield is, is very, very important because it, it stops the enemy's arrows that fly You all recognize faith is everything. And what the enemy is trying to do is, is take our thoughts off what God has done for us, what Jesus has done for us, and cause us to think of that we're, you know, that we, we don't have him or we're lost or look at the economy. I mean, surely... We, we, we don't have enough pension. Surely you don't have enough finance to survive. All these thoughts are the, the arrows that fly. So the shield of faith is there to protect not just you, but your families, your friends, all of us as, as Christians. That's what it's there for. In Psalm 710, it reads, My shield is God." 
most high who saves the upright in heart. It is important to realize that doubt, fear, anxiety are all attacks of the enemy, right? I mean, we recognize, especially now, our mental health. We speak a lot about our mental health, but often it's the enemy that is sending these arrows, telling us all sorts, telling us that, that we're finished, that we're too old, that we're not capable, that we're sick and, you know, this sickness will be the death of you. But you know what? Jesus has conquered death. He has conquered death. And um, whatever the enemy tries to fly, send us, send in our way, Jesus has already dealt with it. From the shield of faith, it goes on to the helmet of salvation. And that is something you put on your head. Romans 12, 2, one of my favorite scriptures says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. And his good, pleasing, and perfect will. It's so imperative that we put on the, 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 the helmet of salvation because the battle is, is in the mind. That's where he attacks the most. He attacks our thoughts, you know, because our thoughts are the one that will cause us to, to take action. As a man think it in his mind, so what? And so is he. So whatever you think is what you're going to act on, okay? When you recognize all the inventions that have been created since the beginning of time, they were firstly thoughts, right? Nothing has been invented without firstly being thought about, right? So the creative capacity of man is thought. What is it? All of this is, it wasn't there before. Somebody thought, one day, Derek is going to need something to stand there on and put his papers there, <laughs> you know? And then he created it. The chair that you sit on, it wasn't there before. These are all thoughts, but the enemy likes to, to, to use it and to tell us that we're not capable, to tell us that we're failures, to tell us that we're not good enough, to tell us that we can't go to the other side of the world and do something for God, to tell us that we're not good mu musicians, to tell us we cannot sing, to tell us we cannot preach. These are to tell us that we cannot establish a big business. These are all lies that the enemy likes to tell us. And God has provided us these armors to protect us and to strengthen us. And lastly, there's the sword of the spirit. Sword of the spirit is an offensive weapon. As you notice, most of these other weapons or these armors were protective. There's things that we must put on, right? The helmet we put on, the breastplate we put on, the shoes we put on, um, what else? Yep. The belt put on, breastplate we put on, the sandals we put on, and finally we go to the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit really... Is the only offensive weapon that we have. Um, and really, it's the Word of God. And again, in Hebrews 4.12, it says, The Word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joint and marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Do you see that? The word, two-edged sword. It tells us what it is. That's exactly what it is. It's, it's a sword that we have to use. And it's the sword that... Do you, reckon, do you remember when Jesus was... He was in the desert. And the enemy came to him. 
and said to him, If you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, right? And that was taken from, I think it was Matthew 4 1. If you are the Son of God, then tell these stones to become bread. And that's what the enemy uses. He tells us that if you are saved, then do this. It, and he told Jesus, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. And he says to him, all this I give you, he said, if, again, if you are, just, do you recognize that all these are conditions? Then bow down and worship me. He was testing him. He was attacking him. And how did Jesus reply him? He used his sword, which is the word. Jesus said to him, it is written, man, for the first one, when he was telling Jesus to turn the stones to the bread, he said, Jesus, um, Jesus said to him that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So he used the sword. And on the second one, when he said to him to throw himself, he says, it is written, do not, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And on the last one, when he said to him to bow down and worship him, Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. It's imperative to recognize how powerful the word of God is. It's everything. Without the word, there is nothing. You know, we, we don't have any, anything to, to go on. The word informs us of what God has done for us. It tells us who God is. It tells us how Jesus is. And so the word of God is imperative. And it's our sword that we use to fight, that he's given to us. So the understanding is that all these weapons that God has given to us is to arm us for the spiritual battle that is going on. We must immerse ourselves in the Word of God. We must continually pray. And this is how we put on the armor. It's through prayer, through the Word, through worship. These are the primary areas of activity that, that is a requirement for us to do. Because when you speak of, obviously, the armor... It's like these are physical elements. So how do we actually apply these things? Through prayer, through the word, and through worship. There are other areas such as fasting, okay? But primarily, these are the key, key areas that we need to recognize how we apply these weapons. Now, God is faithful. He's faithful to know where we are. But um, if we continued, if we continue to walk and not put on armor, not to recognize that he has given us special weapons to fight for him, then we stand to be defeated and we will believe what the enemy sends us. It's imperative that we continue to, to pray. It's imperative that we continue to apply the word and to worship. Amen? Now, this year, for me, was a landmark birthday, and I just turned 25 ag again. <laughs> <laughs> so,
So, in turning, you know, this landmark birthday of mine, just before that, I shared that I had a blood clot in my arm. And as some of you know, blood clot is, is very dangerous. And so, when I had the blood clot in my arm and I got prayed for, uh, I went to, 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 to the doctors and, and they sent me to hospital and so forth and located it. Um, I was healed. I was healed, yes. And what the enemy then attacked me with was a thought in my mind that he said that your friend has died with a blood clot and the blood clot came through his leg and it's true during that time that I had it in my arm a friend of mine actually had blood clot in his leg and unfortunately he died around the same time as I had my blood clot and the enemy remind me, reminded me of that and at the same time I had a tingling in my legs and as I had that tingling in my legs I just thought this isn't right but then I remember that I was healed by the blood of Jesus. That by his stripes I am healed. Amen. That's what the Lord gave me. And then I also remembered that death is not the end. That is actually the beginning. So I had to laugh at him and say, you know, do your worst. Because I knew I was healed, and because I knew that death was not the end, what could he have done to me? And so, God is faithful to show us what we need to fight the enemy with when we need him. When we need God, he's there. He has given us his word in the Bible and we must soak it in because the enemy is on, he's, he's on the onslaught. He is looking to continually fire and he, he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. You know, so God will say that whatever you're going through, he has made a way through his word he has really show us, showed us examples through Jesus. He's a conqueror. He's, um, he's the one that has given us all the weapons that we need. He has fashioned it in this time, in this season. Remember how you fight is by the word. Know the word. Know the word for yourself because the word is, 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 is everything. It's what we fight with. It's what we stand on. When you stand on the word, there's nothing more that the enemy can do because it's not our word. It's God's word. So stand on the word and pray. Continue to seek him. Continue to connect with him. When you've connected with God, there's a flow that comes from him. Continue to worship him regardless of whatever you go through. You know? Because whatever you go through, he has made a way for us. Amen. Let's uh, be upstanding. We pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, we bless you, and we honor you. We 
thank you for the armor that you've given us. We thank you that you are faithful and true. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And there's none like you in heaven and on earth. You are above all things, above all people. We bless you. We thank you that the word that you've spoken will penetrate the hearts of your people and we will begin to, to put on the armor daily for the onslaught of the enemy never ceases. We thank you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.